of the BCSN Sports Wrap. My name is Brian Fulford, and on this episode, I will be having a conversation with the head coach of Howard University men's basketball program, Kenneth Blakeney. It's an interview that I have been looking forward to having over the last few weeks. Um, I've been sort of out of pocket over the last couple of weeks. Uh, dealing with some health things, and just kind of recharging the batteries. So uh, shout out to A.D. Drew, who has uh, done the last couple of podcasts uh, with some of his conversations that he's had. And so I finally got an opportunity um, to put this one together. Uh, Shout out to Mr. Derek Bryant, the uh, SID over at Howard, for helping me put this together. And one of the reasons I wanted to, to have this conversation with Coach Blakeney is because, you know, Howard University has really been in the news of late. I mean, their brand is, it's always strong, but I feel like it's, it's at its strongest that it's been over the last few months, especially, <clears throat> excuse me, especially uh, from, a, from a men's basketball and just really maybe a university perspective overall. I mean, obviously, the president of the university, uh, Dr. Frederick, has been uh, in in the forefront of discussing matters as it relates to, you know, the MEAC and uh, the MEAC conference canceling fall sports. Uh, And and then, of course, you know, most recently, you had Senator Harris, Kamala Harris. I, I hope I said that right. You know, that's a big thing right now in terms of whether you get her first name right. So I hope I just said that right. But otherwise, I'm going with Senator Harris. Uh, Obviously, she has been selected as the vice presidential running mate for Joe Biden. And so she's a Howard grad, an AKA. So Howard and the AKAs definitely are are gonna be uh, off the chain for the next few months. But uh, and then in terms of basketball, you know, there's, the news that Howard University was going to be hosting Notre Dame University, uh, really one of those situations where Notre Dame kind of, I feel like Notre Dame really helped make that possible because it's very unusual uh, to have a major program, Power 5 program, come to an HBCU. And so I'll never forget when those rumors of that first popped up, you know, a lot of people were speculating. I think I even did a blog post where I put together some potential matchups. And one of those matchups that I put together was Howard and Notre Dame, more so because of the the strong academic brands of each school. And at that time, I had completely looked over the fact that Coach Blakeney and Coach Bray have this amazing relationship that as you'll kind of find out in this interview with him, dates back to probably almost 30 years. So, um, you know, that that's sort of a, an interesting angle. And I thought, uh, you know, it, it's a great opportunity for these, you know, hey, what I would like to see, I would love to see ACC versus or ACC and HBCU matchups you know i think that was sort of the the premise of that whole blog post that i did but i think this may be a great jumping off point and i think uh you know we have a coach blakely and i have a great discussion about the opportunity and opportunities that will sort of come from that meeting and then of course you know most recently 
you know, Howard got the commitment from a core maker, a five-star prospect. Um, and uh, there's even been another transfer, uh, Purdue University basketball player that's, uh, that's uh, made a commitment to transfer to Howard. And, and there's a lot of outside things that are going on with that. So, you know, coach, coach can't really comment specifically on those players, but, but we get into talking about just uh, the, the prospects of recruiting, uh, recruiting, you know, major talent, which is a, a big thing right now. You know, we've seen four star and even some five star guys really strongly consider HBCU. So that's sort of become the thing now and in a positive way. You know, it's good to see that guys are understanding that, you know, there's an opportunity there and it's not, it doesn't have to be solely driven on the fact that, you know, my school or this school, school A, school B appears on ESPN. I mean, we, we live in a digital uh, space now where if a lot of our HBCU schools are thinking every game should be and could be broadcast online. I mean, let's be honest, that's sort of one of the things that the Black College Sports Network here, that's what we're hoping to be able to achieve. It's a beautiful thing when you're in the middle of recording that uh, your phone goes off. So this is a, this is a great opportunity and a, and a great conversation that I had with Coach Blakeney. Uh, I, I'm always interested in talking to basketball people, especially basketball coaches at a level that I have never had an opportunity to coach at. You know, I, I've coached in, at the high school level, I've coached middle school level, um, and, and that's a, a fun environment to coach at. So when you get a chance to really talk to guys at the, the next level, whether they be assistant coaches or head coaches, and, you know, nobody has a better pedigree right now, in my opinion, than Coach Blakeney. I mean, here's a here's a, a coach who has played for Hall of Famer in Morgan Wooten, Hall of Famer Coach Mike Shashesky at Duke, coached um, under I believe a Hall of Famer in Lefty Drizel, and a future Hall of Famer probably Mike Bray, and he's also worked with uh, Tommy Amaker who. Look, you know, over at Harvard, who's to say in 20 years that Tommy Amaker may not be a Hall of Famer? So there's a there's a there's a pedigree and uh, Coach Blakeney coming off of the tree of so many great coaches. Uh, Howard has a great opportunity and a great coach uh, in their program right now that I think is really going to uh, reshape that program over the next five, 10 plus years, however long Coach Blakeney wants to be there. So uh, we get into talking about some great things, his history uh, in basketball, his early development days, and then we get into talking about some of the more relevant things. So I really appreciate his time. I hope you enjoy the conversation with Coach Kenneth Blakeney and want to encourage you to uh, uh, continue to, you know, make sure to follow, like, and subscribe to the Black College Sports Network on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at MyBCSN1, the number one. And then, of course, if uh, you're watching on YouTube, the MyJBN Online and the Jericho Broadcast Network family, the group of shows that, that we have available, make sure to like and subscribe so that uh, you'll be updated whenever we uh, have a new show. So. Uh, I appreciate you taking time to watch, and here now is my conversation with Coach Kenneth Blakeney. It's a pleasure to be joined by the head coach of the Howard University men's basketball program, Coach Kenneth Blakeney. Coach, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to, uh, to join me for a conversation. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Brian. How are you, man? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, first off, let me ask, how are you, your family, your coaching staff doing health-wise, mental health-wise right now uh, during this pandemic that we're in? 
Yeah, thanks for asking, man. Uh, everyone's doing okay, as well as we can, you know. Uh, under the circumstances, this is a uh, unique time in our country and in our history. And uh, I think everybody is persevering the best that they can right now. Uh, we just got some of our players back on campus yesterday, and uh, it was great to see them. And uh, kind of great to re-socialize a little bit. I know a lot of us have been kind of cooped in the house for the last five months. So it was really neat to see some of our guys uh, as they arrived back on campus. Right. It's good. Good to hear. Good to hear. Um, and, and so let me let me ask uh, kind of a, a little bit about about that before we get into it. Um, uh, when when are students uh, coming back fully on campus? Um, you mentioned having some. Um, but but uh, I don't I don't imagine you've been able to do too much with them uh, in the summer. Uh, so, so when do when do you expect everyone to be back? Well, um, we had probably I think ten or twelve come in yesterday um, when they arrived. Before they got to uh, to the apartments, they had to have a COVID test. Uh, so they immediately went to Student Health Services. Uh, they got a COVID test, and then they were able to check into the apartments. Um, so we have our young men are coming back. Some came back yesterday. We have a few coming back uh, tomorrow. I mean, excuse me, today. And then uh, the other guys are coming in on Monday. Okay. Um, I, I, Howard Howard University has uh, look. There's a the 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 brand name Howard is is really buzzing right now. I mean, a lot of great things are happening, uh, not only with your program, uh, obviously, uh, possibly our future vice president is a Howard grad. Um, what's it like right now being a representative of Howard University as you go out and just kind of talk to people and say, you know, hey, I'm Coach Blakeney from Howard? Yeah, it's, it's pretty neat right now, Brian, to be honest with you, but it's the reason that I wanted the job. Um, I understood the history, I understood the tradition, and uh, really having a chance to take a deep dive in the culture over the last year and meet uh, students, alums, and, and ingratiate myself in the Howard community, uh, it's been a neat, neat year. Um, to see Senator Harris, uh, you know, receive the, uh, the, 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 the bid or, or uh, the nomination or, uh, you know, being our, 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 having a chance to be our next vice president. Um, you know, the, the buzz for Howard right now, I know the, her sorority, the AKAs uh, are, oh, are excited right now. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a fun time. And I think, you know, all of HBCUs right now are celebrating and kind of having a little bit of a renaissance, uh, you know, and it's a great moment for, for all those universities. Have you personally had an opportunity to meet Senator Harris yet? I haven't, but we hope that, uh, you know, we'll have her at a few of our games. And by that time, uh, God willing, she is uh, Vice President Harris. Right, right. Exactly, exactly. Um, so, look, I, I am a, I'm a big basketball guy. Grew up in Indiana, uh, you know, where we believe, you know, we, it, it's all about basketball. In, in 49 other states, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, I, that's how I grew up. So I'm always fascinated by uh, when I get a chance to talk with coaches and people in the game about their background. And I, before we get into a lot of the current things going on with your program, I kind of wanted to go, you know, just kind of talk a little bit about your, your background uh, with basketball, because I find it fascinating. There's, there's a lot of great stuff there. But let me start by just asking, when did you fall in love with the game of basketball? Or, or maybe – when did you realize, hey, basketball can help me do greater things or more things than maybe what's possible? Yeah, great question. Uh, it, it goes to when I was eight years old, to be quite honest with you. Uh, I was playing in a police boys and girls club. I probably was the worst player on the team. And we were playing a game where it had gone to double overtime. So it was like the next point won and someone happened to throw me the ball in the corner. I literally just turned around and threw it at the basket. It went in and we won the game and uh, oh, everybody man. watched me. And I was uh, at eight years old, I was just in shock because one, it was the first basket that I ever made in the game. And two, uh, I was just surprised that everybody reacted the way that they did. 
Um, so from that, I really enjoyed that feeling of contributing to a team and having a, a small part of helping a team win. Uh, so that next summer, I dedicated myself to, to get out on the court every day and just kind of, I didn't have a, you know, I didn't have a, uh, like today they have basketball trainers. So I just yeah. did full court layups every day uh, till I just became a really good, you know, dribbler and a guy that can make layups. And then after being able to, to do that, I, I used to pull up for like five footers. Uh, and then I kind of mastered that a little bit. I don't know if you ever mastered a game, but um, it was something that I worked on that I got comfortable with. And it just kind of evolved from there. Uh, so the game has been uh, something that has, has been a passion and, a, and a, something that's been a pleasure for me. I think, uh, Brian, one of the things growing up in inner city Washington, D.C., it was also something that probably saved my life. Um, you know, having a chance to be in the Boys and Girls Club or the recreation centers in the Washington, D.C. area, uh, you know, allowed me an opportunity uh, to have almost a little bit of a safe haven to get off, uh, to get off the streets uh, in D.C. So uh, the game has been very uh, rewarding for me, and I'm uh, blessed to, to have a chance now to share it with so many other people. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's – it's real important to hear – how those early moments in your in your youth uh, or any young person's life kind of, uh, especially with the game of basketball, uh, really helps kind of set the table for uh, future things. Um, and, and so, you you uh, in high school you eventually would go on to Dematha Catholic High School, which I mean is well known nationally. Uh, as one of the premier basketball programs, especially when you attended there. Um, tell me a little bit about that decision to go there or maybe what the, the basketball scene was like for you as an eighth grader going into your ninth grade year where you're deciding between maybe which school to go to. Yeah, Brian, it, it's a, probably a neat story because I went to DeMatha to play football. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and, you know, probably basketball at that time was maybe my third best sport. Um, probably my best sport was baseball. My second best sport was, was football. And then <laughs> my third best sport probably was basketball. Um, but, yeah, I, I went to DeMatha to play football. Um, one, of our, uh, uh, one of our coaches at the rec center, his name was uh, just passed last year, Mr. Fluff Parker. Um, had a really good friend uh, named Norm Anderson. And Norm Anderson had a son named Mike Anderson. And uh, Mike was a All-American running back at DeMatha. And uh, he also played basketball. So he went to attended the University of Maryland and played both sports, basketball and football there. So Mike's dad was someone that was very influential in helping me get to DeMatha. Uh, but I got there and, uh, you know, they asked me what position did I play the freshman team coach did and they weren't aware that I was probably uh, asked to come there for, to play a certain position. And, uh, you know, at that time it was like, okay, we've been grooming a quarterback to play this position since he was in the fifth grade. Um, so they told me to go out and play wide receiver or running back or something like that. I was like, all right, I'll play this year, but after this I'm, I'm done playing football. <laughs> so I uh, gradually started playing more and more basketball and, uh, you know, Coach Wooten didn't even know I was a student athlete at DeMatha uh, until one of our freshman games well into the season. And, uh, you know, so I was able to continue, I think, a, a path of developing a relationship with him. He becoming such an influential and a uh, guide in my life, uh, a mentor that I, uh, you know, I, I'm not here today if it wasn't for him. Um, you know, he was just somebody that was always – uh, caring and nurturing and developing uh, like a teacher, uh, you know, like a teacher. He's, a, he's an educator. So, um, you know, with, without my, his, the guidance from Coach Wooten, uh, that really helped me propel me to become a better player and I think also a better player uh, and a better person um, and definitely a better student. Yeah, and, and Coach Morgan Wooten, who uh, a Hall of Famer, uh, was, uh, I believe it was something like 40, six seasons there at, at DeMatha High School coaching. Um, now, again, I'm, I'm, I'm being 
transparent. My, my Indiana bias, you know, I did not know until, of course, thanks to the Internet, and then, you, and then you get out of the state of Indiana, you start learning about how strong basketball is in other places like D.C. and then the, uh, the Washington Catholic uh, Athletic Conference, which your high school dominated, of course, uh, um, especially under Coach Wooten. For people who, you know, may not be familiar with um, that conference or maybe just that environment, Maybe just share a few a few minutes on maybe what it was like playing and some of the competition you went against um, during that time and, and how that propelled you into becoming, you know, you eventually became one of a, a top 50 recruit towards your senior year. Yeah, yeah, it, it was, um, you know, you being from Indiana, you would really understand this. Um, it, it's a lot like Indiana basketball, the, the Washington Catholic Athletic League. Uh, is you know probably the top league right now considered in the country mm -hmm. um it's comprised of probably you know schools from the maryland pg county uh area the maryland montgomery county area uh the dc catholic uh area and then also you have some virginia schools and uh you know we had um some unbelievable coaches um in our league and i, I think honestly that era of coaches has really propelled the basketball to where it is today. Um, you had guys like Morgan Wooten, you had guys like Joe Gallagher at a high school called St. John's, you had Dick Myers at a school uh, called Gonzaga. I mean, those three guys alone probably have, you know, close to 2,500 wins. Um, so it, it was a lot of great, great coaches, um, that came through that league and outside that league, you have guys like Red Jenkins that coached at WT Woodson. He was the high school coach of, uh, Tommy Amaker, who's now currently the head coach at Harvard university. Um, you have Stu Vetter, who is, you know, considered one of the best coaches to ever do it at the high school level. He was at Flint Hill and Montrose and Harker prep. Um, you know, between those five guys that I think I just named, you may have 3,500 wins. And I think what happened is their offsprings, um, you know, were able to kind of take it and run with it a little further. And the game has evolved and there's more, uh, there's more people that is, are, are concentrating on basketball as a singular sport um, that is just kind of taken off in the DMV area. Um, you know, probably in my class alone, we might have had eight guys that make the NBA um, from our area. And, uh, you know, today I think we're considered the number one area in, in the country for basketball because there's more NBA players in the last 15 years that have come from the DMV, the District of Maryland and Virginia, and also uh, more, more Division I basketball players in the last 15 years than any other area in the country. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. Uh, you know, the DMV definitely, I, I'd have to put it right up there in the top three with, uh, with Indiana, North Carolina, you know, is, and, and New York, of course, is as great basketball uh, hubs. Um, your recruitment to, to Duke, I'm sure, you know, you had a lot of opportunities uh, and a lot of schools calling um, at that time, were, were there any HBCUs, uh, even Howard, were there any schools that you were considering or that were recruiting you or uh, involved in the process prior to you making your commitment to go to Duke? No, no, there, there wasn't any HBCUs that were on my radar. Um, I don't even think I received any letters from an HBCU. Um, I, I think that, you know, a lot of the young men from the D.C. area, uh, you know, kind of with, with Howard, always looked at Howard as an academic school yeah. and not an athletic school. Yeah. And so a lot of the, the, the young men here uh, have gone elsewhere or out of town for their uh, college experience. And uh, that's one thing for us that's really important. Um, when I got the job uh, last year, we had one young man from the DMV uh, on our roster, and today we have 10. So wow. it's been a, an important thing. And, and Brian, I, for me, Indiana has kind of been a little bit of the model in terms of, of that. Um, I remember when I first started w working with Coach Mike Bray, 
um, at the University of Delaware. And he talked about, you know, creating culture and doing it with Indiana kids. So it's the same kind of focus for me, like, you know, creating culture at Howard, even though they're not Indiana young men, um, you know, it's kind of the same model. We need to get guys that have been coached, guys that have played in great competition, uh, guys that understand uh, and have a high basketball IQ. And that, that we, we feel that that's an area here in the district, uh, Maryland and Virginia. So we really focused on trying to get young men from this area to create that culture for us of uh, great basketball IQ and, and feel for the game. Do, do you feel like uh, thinking back on it 25, 30 years ago or however long it was, if uh, maybe an HBCU or two had uh, shown some interest? Um, and, and again, I, I don't know your familiarity with HBCUs. Obviously, Howard's in your backyard, obviously, and you've got other schools uh, in, in that area. Um, do you think you would have uh, considered uh, possibly going to an HBCU? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I'm probably one of one or two of my family that haven't gone to an HBCU. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, my sister went to an HBCU. My uncles went to an HBCU. My cousins have gone to HBCUs. Um, so I am probably, you know, one of the, the first to go outside and go to a PWI. Um, so, yeah, it, I mean, it was certainly uh, on my radar. We understood what it was in our household. Um, but like I said, it was uh, the, the, just the not understanding um, what Howard's brand meant at a time when you're 17, 18 years old on the, the history and the tradition of the university. At that age, you know, I'm looking at TV and going, well, they're not playing on TV. Um, you know, or they're, you know, it's, it's really all about academics because they haven't pushed the envelope with the program. And I'm just kind of aware of what I'm seeing, you know, through television um, to say like, hey, these, these programs are probably um, emphasizing uh, athletics a little bit more than others. Yeah. Um, and, and so let's kind of talk a little bit about that um, in, in terms of just recruiting now in, in, in making um, the brand Howard uh, more aware to young people. Um, and you mentioned the fact that now you have a roster with uh, 10 players uh, from the DMV area. What's that, what's that recruiting pitch like? Or, or maybe I guess a better question is, what are the things that you are emphasizing to the young men and their families when obviously it's a different game? I mean, somebody like a, an ACC school is obviously going to be able to promote the, the television aspect of things. But what is it that you're able to come into a household and and promote uh, that that seems to be uh, working, drawing attention um, uh, with the with the level of success that that you're having right now? Well, I think you know partly of it is the brand, and when I mean the brand, it's Howard, but we're also talking about the history, the tradition, and the culture. Um, Howard University and, and, and us as, as black people, we stand on the shoulders of some giants. And, uh, you know, quite recently, as we mentioned earlier in the, the discussion, you know, Senator Harris, uh, who is the, the first uh, black uh, female senator from California. You know, you got Andrew Young, uh, first U.S. ambassador. You got David Dinkins, the first black mayor of, of New York. You got uh, Douglas Wilder, the first black governor of Virginia. Uh, you got, you know, Thurgood Marshall, the first black Supreme Court justice, and you can keep going down the list of firsts. Uh, so we really stand on the shoulders of some giants when, when we're talking about Howard University. And I thought that if we can connect, uh, you know, the lineage and the history and the tradition, uh, along with uh, the basketball part of it, that it can really ignite. And I think, you know, part of it, uh, being that is just, um, you know, my background a little bit, places that I've been have kind of, uh, I think, made those conversations a little bit easier, um, but also understanding that we can build something that's unique and special at Howard. Um, we have a brand that I think that we can do something unique like a Butler, like a Gonzaga, like a St. Mary's, um, that is a, you know, a mid-major university 
that is playing uh, competitively year in and year out at a high major uh, clip. Yeah. Um, you talk a little bit about that history. I recently saw um, a, a video clip of Brooklyn Nets coach Jacques Vaughn kind of taking a moment in practice to show his players. Uh, I think it was a video about Senator John, the late Senator um, uh, John Lewis. Um, and I thought that was really a powerful moment that he was almost educating a group of young guys who he probably has a group of guys who are probably 21 to 25. You know, I'm, I'm just guessing here off that roster that, I, that I'm familiar, that I know of. Um, do you find yourself, and you kind of mentioned a little bit, do you find yourself having to do similar things or maybe is that something you're doing more of in terms of educating your guys about, as you mentioned, those, uh, those, those people that have, that have helped form not only this country that come from Howard, um, uh, so, on, uh, you know, just uh, in the community overall. I mean, do you find yourself being a teacher, an educator, historian, so to speak? Yeah, yeah, that, that's a great question and great point. And that's uh, pretty neat to hear about uh, Coach Vaughn, uh, who was a really good player at Kansas. And then I think he ended up playing, you know, 10, 12 years in the NBA. Uh, that's, yeah. that's exciting to hear. Um, yeah, I mean, because ultimately, Brian, we're, we're teachers, we're educators. Um, and that's, that's what we do. We have a, a classroom that young men and women, I think, you know, really love being in. Uh, so if we're not taking moments to, to educate our, our young men and women, uh, we're missing a, a, an incredible, valuable opportunity. Um, yeah, every day before practice, I find either something in the newspaper, I find a poem, I find a story, and I read it to our guys. And I ask them questions about uh, what I just read. And uh, I, I, it's something that, you know, goes back to, uh, you know, Coach Wooten, I think, and that, that was probably passed down from him or shared with him from Coach Dean Smith. It's something that Coach Tommy Amaker did at Harvard. And, uh, you know, all of the names that I just mentioned, every last one of those guys considered themselves educators. Um, so, yeah, we do, um, we do try to have life lessons and teaching moments every single day. Um, you know, we're very fortunate over the, the pandemic um, to have a chance to, to kind of uh, initiate three initiatives. Um, and one is a uh, student assistant fund that we did a virtual fundraiser for over a three week period, uh, where we raised money for students that had, uh, had some little adversity or challenges due to COVID. Uh, we had to abruptly suspend school um, in mid-March and a lot of students didn't have an opportunity to plan to get home. Uh, I think 66% of our students are on some type of financial aid. So um, that fund kicked in and allowed uh, some of our students to get home. And it's not just student athletes, I'm talking about students overall. So we were able to, to contribute to that uh, as a program, which was really nice. Um, we had a voter registration uh, drive that we're doing currently right now with uh, a company called When We All Vote. And uh, When We All Vote is a co-chaired uh, uh, foundation with Michelle Obama, uh, Chris Paul, and others. And uh, our hopes is to get as many young men registered from the ages of 18 to 25. It's the largest demographic in, uh, in the country that's uh, not participating in voting. So we've been doing that now for about a month and a half. Uh, we have something every Wednesday that we call When We All Vote Wednesdays. And all of our athletes dedicate uh, Wednesday specifically to, um, on their social medias, to, uh, to promote uh, voting and voting registration. And the last initiative that we did is a speaker series. And so far we've had about 24 speakers over the four and a half month period. And it's been some of the most uh, influential leaders and business people and uh, entrepreneurs, lawyers uh, in the country that we've had a chance to kind of learn more about their path, but also really ha uh, take a deep dive into uh, currently what's going on with our nation uh, with the social unrest, 
uh, with police brutality, with George Floyd, Black Lives Matter. Um, so to have some kind of, uh, I think, insightful uh, conversations with uh, men and women who are at the top of their field in the country has been really an educational moment for us. So uh, we try to do as much as we can on a daily basis with our guys and trying to t use every moment we can with them uh, to be a teaching moment. And what do you find are some of the uh, maybe topics or areas of concern that you hear from your players as these elections come near? What are, what are those things that worry them or on their mind? Yeah, I think, I think uh, you know, leading young black men, um, they see the, I think, the uh, injustices that are going on in the country and they want to try to do things to make them right. So uh, with police brutality, um, you know, that's something that is really big and it, with our team. Uh, we, we talked the other day, we had, a, uh, we had a psychologist on the other day with our guys and they did an exercise. And one of the things that uh, what happened was our guys kind of talked about different moments where, uh, you know, police, uh, had had, you know, interactions with our, our guys and, and just what those interactions were like and, and what, it, what, what impact that had on them and on their lives. So, um, you know, there's a, a consciousness that I think our young men have um, and also an action that they want to put in place uh, that probably was ignited with the, the murder of Mr. George Floyd, um, that they have a curious kind of, uh, you know, wanting to know more, wanting to do more, wanting to, 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 you know, continue the conversation, which is really cool. So we've been working on some things behind the scenes with our guys, some things that we're going to introduce um, in the next couple of weeks that we're really excited and proud about. And have you been able to share maybe personal experiences that you've had? Because you've traveled in some circles that most African-American men have not you know, or don't get an opportunity to, you, you probably, uh, you know, through the game of basketball, just education and the schools that you've gone to, you, you've been, uh, you've been witness to probably experiences that 99% don't get to see and do. H have you had an opportunity to share, you know, your own personal uh, stories with them? Yeah, absolutely. I have um, a lot of, uh, Brian, a lot of this stuff with me, I, I really love to share with them, but I, I don't want to share. Uh, I, I don't, I share with them, but I, I share with them like stuff where they can, can really, I think, um, identify with. And I, I hope I'm explaining that uh, in a way like, you know, I don't want to talk too much about like my basketball experiences, right? Right. Um, but when we talk about, you know, racism and living in the South for five years and, uh, you know, all the different things that kind of go along with that, um, yeah, I absolutely do share that with them. Um, and it, it's something that we have in common uh, growing up in DC, getting stopped by the cops. Uh, being accused of things that you haven't been, haven't done in the past or haven't done period. Um, yeah. All of those are shared experiences that, uh, you know, our young men and myself uh, can kind of uh, have a little bit of, of things in common. So, you know, as much as I can, I would love to, to share my stuff, but I, I don't want my stuff to, to overshadow or get in the way of their, their things that are, you know, with their development and growth is really important. Uh, right now at this moment. I understand. I understand. Definitely. Um, speak, I mean, speaking of um, some of the, I, the names that, that you have played for or coached with, uh, of course, you played for Coach Morgan Wooten, Coach Mike Krzyzewski at Duke. Uh, you coached with um, Lefty Drizel. Uh, Mike Bray, T uh, Tommy Amaker. Um, I, I hope I didn't forget. Those are just some of the names that popped out to me when I was uh, going back through your bio. <clears throat> as you started your first season as a head coach, 
what things or, or how did you how did you craft all of that knowledge that that you've you know been around into and i'm sure you're still formulating it but it, it, and how did you start what, what kind of things did you pull from this coach that coach uh to at least get you going in the right direction of where you want to go yeah the, the single kind of uh thing that all of those wonderful coaches have in common is uh fundamentals okay. and it, it took me back, you know, to being a, you know, a young man learning the game and having a foundation. And we were at the beginning of the season, we stressed and taught fundamentals, uh, you know, doing things that if you saw us practice, you would be like, those are things that probably a 10 year old team would do, or, you know, 12 and under would do. But I really found those things to be very important, important and helpful for, excuse me. Um, so we worked on chest passes. We worked on bounce passes. We worked on overhead passes. We worked on faking down and passing up. We worked on layups. Um, all of the fundamental things that I think, you know, you do and you learn at a young age are things that we really stressed and, and continue to teach throughout the year. So, uh, you know, that was something that was in common with those guys. I think their preparation, uh, trying to be prepared as much as I could for um, anything that may come up. Uh, is something that I took from a lot of those guys. Um, you know, trying to be an effective communicator. Uh, that is something that's really uh, something I, I, I saw in, in Coach K and, and Coach Wooten, Mike Bray, Tommy Amaker, Lefty Drizel. Um, you know, but also allowing our guys, I think, also an opportunity to grow, uh, which is really important. And, and having them take responsibility of uh, the program and of the team. Um, and that's, I, I think when, you know, when, when your team takes ownership of, uh, of their group is when you can gain the highest level of, of, uh, of potential or reaching your potential uh, possible. So um, all of those things are, are, are things that I had in the back of my mind. Obviously, there's probably some things that are um, subconsciously there uh, that I, I, I don't even think about because I, you know, all of my years of being in the classrooms of the, the, the gentlemen that you mentioned, the coaches that you mentioned, uh, it may just be something subliminally that just pops up. But I, I've been very fortunate and lucky um, a little bit. I call myself the Black Forest Gump sometimes because uh, <laughs> I've I found myself in the right rooms or in the right situations uh, more often than, than not. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, th this past season, uh, you, you, uh, you had a senior, um, who became the, the MEAC's all-time leading scorer, uh, Charles Williams. Um, talk a little bit about, um, what he meant to, to you and the program, because I, I found it interesting that, you know, a lot of speculation after his junior year as to what he would do for his senior year. Uh, obviously, new coach, um, new situation. But I, I, I loved one of his quotes that I read where he said he wanted to be there at Howard. You know, that the three previous years that he had spent at Howard really meant something. And you talk about that brand. I thought that was, was one of the, the powerful statements that I read in that here's a young man who I'm sure – there were people calling and pulling and trying to get him to come to other places, but he chose to stay at Howard and be a part of the program in your first year. Talk a little bit about Charles uh, and, and the impact he had on, on the season for you all last year. Yeah, well, he was the first recruit that I had to go out and get. Um, okay. And, uh, you know, we, we went out and met with his mom and dad and Charles and, uh, you know, it, it, went, uh, it went extremely well. And I think we were able to kind of show him, uh, you know, what our plan was and our, our plan for the team and our plan for him um, and his family. And, and he, you know, really enjoyed what we shared with them. Uh, so having a chance to kind of, I guess, re-recruit him or have him be the first guy to kind of say, Coach, I'm, I'm on board. I want to be a part of your program uh, was amazing. I, I wish I could still coach him. I wish I had another year with him. 
um, because I really enjoy who he is as a person. And uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's an incredible player. Um, you know, CJ is one of the probably most well-liked student athletes to ever walk the, the campus at, at Howard. Uh, he always had a smile on his face, uh, always had kind words to say. Um, you know, just a wonderful, wonderful young man. His mom and dad are terrific people, and they did an unbelievable job with him. And, uh, you know, we're certainly going to miss him. But uh, the impact that he had on our program, uh, the sacrifice that he made this year uh, for the program, uh, I, I, I is just, I think, commendable on, on his. And it talks about the type of character and person that he is. Um, he made, I thought, great strides and uh, wanting to get better, wanting to understand how he could uh, – continue to improve his game and uh, I think the future is going to be very bright for him uh, down the line yeah that, that's awesome and the fact that he even broke a I believe a 29 year record uh w w was also uh, sort of like a, it was like a great reward for for uh, everything that uh that he did um, Coach, I, I, I definitely appreciate your time I wanted to end with uh kind of talking a little bit about just the um the opportunity, uh, well, not really opportunity, but more so the, the Notre Dame game, um, you know, Notre Dame and, and Coach Mike Bray making the announcement uh, earlier this summer that they were going to come to Howard and play a game, which, you know, we're, we're very familiar on the HBCU circuit that, uh, you know, uh, a lot of times the HBCU, HBCUs go to the PWIs. Um, and every now and then there'll be a good upset, but we understand the purposes of going to those games, but hearing an ACC school choosing to come to Howard, I mean, that was, that was huge news. And so I, you know, I know there's a great relationship there with you and coach Bray. Tell me and tell us a little bit about how that came to be more, more so just that game and that opportunity yeah, uh, that, that's a great question, and, and thank you for asking. Yeah, Coach Bray and I, we, we have a – that's he's like, he's like a father figure slash big brother now that I'm a little bit older. But uh, earlier on, I, growing up with a, in a single uh, mom household, single parent household, uh, Coach Bray was a guy that was very influential in my life. Um, I've known him since I was 14 years old as a freshman at DeMatha Catholic High School where he was a – uh, history teacher when I was a freshman wow. and uh, he went from there to Duke University as an assistant then the University of uh, Delaware and uh, then Notre Dame and I've been with Coach Bray at uh, you know several of those spots we were at DeMatha together we were at Duke together and we were at uh, University of Delaware together um, so our relationship is really really strong and uh, you know I don't know how many people really understand how strong it is uh, his family is my family. My family is his family. He, he can tell you my full address right now and my phone number to the house where my mom still lives at right now by heart. <laughs> wow. Uh, that's how close we are. But, you know, we, we have a uh, – when I got the job at Howard, uh, he and I um, talked about doing a home-and-home -home series uh, where we go out to South Bend and play, and he would come to Howard and play. And uh, it was just a matter of trying to figure out the dates – uh, surrounding that. And my thing is that, you know, I, when I was talking to Coach Bray, I, I wanted him to, to kind of think about um, bringing Notre Dame uh, to Howard. And the reason is because, you know, some, most PWIs, most Power Five schools are comprised to anywhere between, you know, 55 to 60 percent of their team is African American. Right. And like we discussed earlier, um, a lot of African American young males. Uh, don't know the history and the tradition of great HBCUs. And I thought it would be a wonderful teaching opportunity going back to educating and teaching. Uh, and, and Mike Gray did as well to bring Notre Dame, which is one of the, you know, pillars in, you know, higher education and, and athletics uh, to Howard, which is, you know, for us, we're, we're, you know, our brand we feel is just as great as their brand. Um, and give his young men a, a history and tradition, uh, a history lesson on HBCUs, on Howard, but also 
for those guys to get a chance to understand the cultural the culture of Howard. Um, our games are different, as you well know. We we have a band. We have you know three or four different dance teams and cheerleading squads. We have DJs. Um, there can be a step show that just you know start start right in the middle of a game. <laughs> All of these things right. are, are are educational for um, you know I think you know, universities that are coming in that are not HBCU universities, but it also, I think, uh, whets the appetite of some of these young men to understand and want, wanting, wanting to understand and wanting to know more about HBCUs and about Howard University. And, and I, I think if I, if I recall hearing an interview that he uh, did, you guys are going to do some things in the D.C. area. And turn, I mean, it, 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 that game kind of falls right around the MLK Day. So, I mean, there are some opportunities there for not only his program and your program to almost fellowship and do some things together and go some places. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful story. We're, we're, we've partnered with them. We were the first program to do When We All Vote. And now, uh, you know, you have probably NBA teams, uh, NFL teams and everybody doing it. But Notre Dame and, and Howard were the first uh, teams to, to partner with When We All Vote. Um, so we're doing a, a collective um, participation to try to get voters to register. Um, so we're doing that. And we've talked about having more of a conversation in, in, with things about social injustice, maybe police brutality, um, things that we can do there. I, I know Coach Bray had talked about wanting to go uh, to one of his favorite boys clubs in D.C., um, number two boys club that's off of New York Avenue. Uh, I think it's called the Bill Butler uh, Gymnasium. Uh, Mr. Butler was a uh, fixture in the community here in Washington, D.C., and uh, helped so many kids. And I think Coach Bray wants to take his team there and practice um, so they can understand uh, a little bit of the fibers and the fabric and the history of uh, uh, what some of the great people uh, uh, have done uh, of, of our color and in our community uh, here in Washington, D.C. So I, I, hats off to him. He really gets it. He understands it. It's, uh, you know, some people have looked at it and saying, well, you know, they're exploiting you. It's not an exploitation. Um, this is a great opportunity for two wonderful institutions to come together and to do something special and unique. And like you said, uh, fellowship and, and grow uh, collectively. We're educators. We are institutions of higher uh, learning. And that's what our mission is, to continue to teach our young men uh, from both sides uh, to grow and develop them so they can go out in the community after they're done with us and, uh, and continue to continue that journey and continue that mission. That that's important. I mean, you, you hit it, you hit it. I mean, a home run right there when you said the fact that the, the percentages of, you know, at the PWIs, I mean, we still have 60s, you know, maybe on some teams, 70, 80% African-American young men. And, and so at the end of the day, regardless of what school you went to, some things won't change, especially the color of your skin and, and, and where you're from. And so giving the, that framework of educating and teaching um, is, is really what it should be about, especially at the college level. You know, I know, I know a lot gets lost nowadays uh, with finances and politics about college athletics, but at the end, you're still there on the college campus to receive an education. And so being able to educate through basketball is an awesome thing. Um, coach, look, I, I, you have been gracious with your time this morning. I know I had, I got a list of other things to talk to you about, but maybe some other time, uh, we will get an opportunity to do that. Um, I, I, is there anything that I, that you wanted to talk about that, or, or maybe mention that I didn't mention? I, I want to give you maybe a final word, something, uh, that maybe you want to share or that, that maybe we didn't get to. Well, I, I will say this, Brian, I, I've done a lot of Zoom calls over the last, you know, three or four months, and uh, you have done as well a job as anybody um, with your interviews, your questions, your preparation. So thank you. I appreciate it. You did an unbelievable job and made this conversation uh, really in, easy and seamless for, for, for me. So thank you so much. Thank you, Coach. Uh, again, um, the, the head coach of Howard Men's Basketball, Coach Kenneth Blakeney. Uh, coach, you, I, social media, I know I, know I, I got a I like from I got to admit, I got a like from you when I, I predicted that Howard and Notre Dame would play. 
uh, when the whole rumor started. So give people your social media so that they can follow you as well as the social media for the Howard men's basketball program. Oh my goodness. You you caught me there off guard. I, I, caught, uh, I caught you. <laughs> yes, you caught me. I think my social media is uh, on Twitter at poopy Blakeney. Uh, I think. <laughs> That sounds uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then our, our men's basketball is H U, I think, B ball. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm I'm at that age where Brian, I, I'm caught between like technology and, and non-technology. So I apologize. Um, if I had it, I would love to have share that with everybody. But my apologies. I I don't know it offhand because I I pay attention to it a little bit, but I. I I, when I was in college, man, we didn't even have email. So uh, I know. I, I hear you. I hear you. I, I understand. We, we're not that far off in age. So I, I get you. But don't worry about it. The power of editing coach, it appears right at the bottom of the screen. Those social media tags, not only for you, but the Howard program. So the power of editing, I'll make sure to take care of you guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Brian. Thank All you. right. Again, Coach, thank you for your time. Uh, good luck in the upcoming year. We'll definitely be following Howard uh, and, and the men's program. And, um, you know, like I said, hopefully things will get uh, it, it's safe in this country where we can actually get off to a, a start of the season. And, and like I said, that's another conversation for another day. And, and maybe we'll get a chance to do that with you. But again, I appreciate you taking time out for this conversation. And uh, God bless you and your family. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. This was amazing. A lot of fun. And everyone, please, please, please wear your mask. Uh, save a life. It may be yours. It may be a loved one. Please wear masks. Well said. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Kenneth Blakely, Howard Blakeney, uh, head coach, uh, men, men's basketball at Howard University. Thank you, Coach. Take care. Thank you, Brian. Take care. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.